Good day. I'm so happy that we are together once more looking at life in abundance versus the normal or the natural life. Why do many Christians fail to experience life in abundance? We see this uh, in, say, for example, the area of marriage. Many Christian couples uh, are not experiencing life in abundance. Uh, that is why the div divorces amongst Christians are on the increase. It, it's a clear indication that they are not experiencing life in abundance. So we're going to be looking at why this is so. The carnal Christian leads a defeated Christian life and does not experience the full benefits of life in abundance. Why? If you look at uh, the circle that represents the life of a carnal Christian, you will see that Christ is in the life, but Christ has been dethroned. And the self or the ego is running the life. Such people deprive themselves of full access to the mind of Christ. They approach scripture and the things of God from the perspective of the world. They remain stuck in the world instead of moving toward the kingdom of God. They remain stuck in the small world of the senses, what they can see, touch, smell, hear, uh, taste. They are ruled by their senses. The other thing that makes life in abundance difficult is that the life that Christ wants us to lead is, you could say, paradoxical when approached with a carnal mind. It is illogical. It, it is nonsensical. A paradox is a significant spiritual principle which appears to be absurd or impossible when viewed with the perspective of the world or with the lens of the world. Here are some of the examples. Christ teaches that you gain your life by losing it. Uh, we find this in Matthew 10, 39. Christ teaches us that you become great by being humble. We find this in Matthew 18, 4. To become a great leader, you must be a servant. Read this in Matthew 20, 26. And Christ also teaches us to forgive those who offend us. We find this in Matthew 18, 35. He also teaches us to love our enemies. Matthew 5, 43 to 44. Christ forgave those who nailed him to the cross. Stephen forgave those who st were stoning him. From the perspective of the world, this is stupid. It doesn't make sense. It is crazy. It is daft. And this is why uh, carnal Christians are battling with yielding their lives to Christ because they are th their minds are leaning more towards the world. And these teachings of Christ don't make sense to them. I hope it is getting clearer why life in abundance is impossible to achieve for both the natural and the carnal Christians. It is a paradox to them. They lack the mind of Christ and the Holy Spirit that would empower them to gain God's perspective. Uh, here's a practical uh, demonstration of the conflict between the spiritual and the natural or the carnal mind. 
in Acts chapter 17, uh, we, we read about Paul and Silas who were preaching the gospel of Christ uh, in Thessalonica. And they were teaching people about life in abundance. But we read in verse 5 that the Jews who did not believe became jealous and taking some evil men from the marketplace uh, gathered a crowd, stirred up. In other words, they created a riot. And in verse 6, we read that these uh, people went to Jason's house looking uh, for these men and failing to find uh, Silas and, and Paul. They then arrested uh, Jason and they took him before the council. And this is what they accused uh, Jason, uh, Paul, and Silas of. They said, these men who have turned the world upside down have come, to, have come here also to the Jews who did not believe. They were wearing the lenses of the world. It appeared to them as if Paul and Silas were turning the world upside down. This is how the natural uh, person and the carnal Christian see life in abundance. They see it as the world being turned upside down. On the other hand, the spiritual person habit habitually yields him themselves to Christ. Christ is on the throne of their lives. They allow Christ to direct them. And they, as the scripture says, they then make use and they have advantage of the mind of Christ. It is a spiritual person that has full access and enjoys the benefits of life in abundance. In uh, 1 Corinthians 2.16 we read about the fact that we have the mind of Christ the Messiah. And in Galatians 5.16, we read, But I say, walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit, responsive to and controlled and guided by the Spirit. Then you will, not, uh, you will certainly not gratify the cravings and the desires of the flesh, of human nature, uh, without God. So that's, that's the difference. A, 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 person, a spiritual person who has yielded themselves to Christ has been empowered by Christ and the Holy Spirit to understand what the Word of God is saying to them. I'm hoping that this you're going to choose to be a spiritual person who has yielded their lives to Christ. Let us pray. Our dear Lord, we are grateful that you have come to give us life in abundance. And you want, Father, to help us to have access to this life in abundance by yielding ourselves on a daily basis to you. We pray, Lord, this morning that you may help us to do so, so that, Lord, we may indeed experience life in abundance. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.